Something I love the most about these midnight services is how thin they are in terms of how close to the divine mystery. There's so much going on in life that when it is all dark outside and all of the candles are lit and glowing and the carols are happening and the story that we've lived, there's, at least for me, a sinking in that happens that's glorious and beautiful and I feel that much closer to the divine and to the more. But it's not that kind of connection that happens every day, especially in the rhythms of trying to get things done and scrambling. And there's always that outside pressure and limitation. I'm a part of a clergy group, and we text uh, regularly. And this week, it's been kids dropping like flies sick. And the text, don't they know this is not the week that they are allowed to do this? And all of the juggling that happens. I've been thinking about this a lot because tonight is one of the deepest, most beautiful mysteries we have and is so far beyond our comprehension. It is the more, the infinite coming into a splice of time and of space. And I think about Mary in that first visit from the angel and the hum of what um, of it all, and then the, okay, let it be according to your will, and the gloriousness of that moment and the closeness, the thinness of that moment. And then all of that kind of ebbing away with the tide further and further as the questions come closer and closer. And there are little steps along the way. I wonder if she visited Elizabeth because the questions and the doubting got too close and there wasn't any room to hold the call and the more anymore until she went to her husband, her cousin, whose husband, Zechariah, couldn't speak, right, from the angel and who was pregnant herself. And all of a sudden, there was a thin place again, a connection again, to remember the call, to sink back into that more, to pinch yourself and say, yeah, it really was real. This was a part of this moment. And then came this trek to Bethlehem, right? The world comes in and interrupts once more with taxes. That, why is it always taxes that need to be done? There's always something. And so then, you know, third trimester, Mary gets on a donkey, ow, and starts going the whole journey and way. And this is not a physically comfortable journey, obviously, but it's also not a socially comfortable journey either because we're not going in cars where we're in our own little bubble playing our own music and happy as can be everyone has access to you and everyone is traveling and people are people and we're going to share news whether it is the good news of the angels or news we're going to make up and distort so that we have something to do on the road to Bethlehem and I wonder if once again Mary started feeling distant from that connection and from that call and wondering again if she had really gotten it right. Because that's what time and space can do that doesn't make room for the infinite. It can make us start to question what is true and did we really remember it correctly? Are we just dreaming up big dreams for ourselves? Is this real in a way that it doesn't even have a place and I can't even speak to it properly in words because it's so other and so different. And I, I think if I were Mary and having those struggles and then getting to Bethlehem and there's no room anywhere, one, just after that ride alone, to forget the social, psychological, psychological, mental, emotional aspect of it, physicality alone would have been hard enough. I still, this is an aside, I still remember I lived in Adams Morgan in Washington, D.C. for a while, and if you have been there, there is no parking available ever. I chose it for the salsa dancing, not for the parking. But I would come in from work, and there would be nights where I would have to circle for 45 minutes before finding a parking space to be home. 
And there were definitely nights where I had no emotional margin to handle that circling. And I would just be sobbing. I just want to get home, God. Just get me home. And so that's what I picture when I picture Mary getting to Bethlehem and there's nowhere to go. Do you re is this really your son? There's nowhere to give birth to this son. Like, surely you have somewhere lined up. And then they're in this stable. And is that if no place wasn't bad enough, there's no midwife. There's Joseph. Joseph does not have the training. But yet, here we go. And in the exasperation of all of that, comes the reminder that my clergy colleagues and I were sharing with one another this week. Christ will be born no matter what. If we can't get there in the way that we wanted to, if we think that it's all messed up and weird and off and just falling apart, there's still a birth. The birth of love and hope and joy and peace. And the angels are there to sing it in all its glory. And the shepherds, those really nasty, rank shepherds, are there to hear it and come running in. And again, if I were Mary, last thing I want is to smell that coming up close to check out my new baby that I just managed to push out. But then the shepherds speak and share their story, and you get that God check of, wait a second, this is one of those thin places, this is one of those moments where I can touch the sacred, where I can gather it up and feel it and know it and hold it. I can treasure it, I can remember it, I can root this moment in my soul forever. There are always going to be times when life rushes in and disorients everything and everything breaks and falls apart. But there will also always be moments of Christ being born and of those crazy shepherds showing up at just the right moment with just the right words, an amazing wonder to hold and to treasure. And so this is the way we do life, storing up these moments, pondering them, holding them, so that when the other moments come, we have something to anchor us so that when we look at the cross and see our child dying, we can remember all the way back to the birth and the beginning and how impossible and how broken that felt and how God still made a way and how Christ was still born. And we can hold that fiercely to know that Christ will be born again. We have a prisoner here who gave me permission to share this story who's in one of those moments of things just falling apart and had gone home to be with family and try to wrangle things and be present to advocate as she could. And dates were um, postponed and things happened where it was just completely unraveling and nothing was going right. And there was no justice, no peace, no hope, love, joy present. But she had promised um, her girls that she would stay to see them um, in their performance the next day. And so she did. And in between that time and that evening, she took her mom um, and her sister to mass because they had wanted to go. And even that was a debacle of her sister falling and her mom forgetting her purse. And so it was just right one of those moments of Murphy's Law where you're trying so hard and it's just not happening. 
And so as she heads back to the um, church praying that it's still open to get this purse, and she's like not even knowing if her mom actually had brought her purse or not, or if it was there, and what was real and what wasn't, she shows up, and the priest is just locking up. The purse was there. She grabs the purse, and he invited her back to the festival the next day. And she wouldn't have known about that festival any other way. And so she took Jackie with her. Um, and it happened to be a Hispanic festival um, celebrating the community and the work in the ESL program in specific that her sister had learned Spanish for to be a part of. And while she was there greeting everyone, knowing 90% of the people, there was a woman who rushed out, gave her a hug, and then told her to wait right there and brought out her daughter and said, Jackie, meet Jacqueline. We named her after you. These are the Christmas miracle moments, the thin places where everything is falling apart, and yet there is Christ. And there is a moment that would have been lost and would have never happened had it not been for all of the chaos and all of the mess. And so there are still a lot of prayers for this family of the peace and love and hope and joy that they need. And there is this moment to hold and to ponder and to treasure and to remember that God is at work, that Emmanuel, God with us, is here and loves us and is born. And these are the moments we hold and we ponder and we use to guide us through all of the others. May we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, this night and every night. Amen. Part of the way that we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, is to be there for each other and for our community as God is there for us. And this not only means sharing beautiful gifts of music that can open our souls and draw us into the glory of this moment, and it is also the presence of the angel trees distributed out in our community, in our midst. It is the food bank, it is the thrifty penny, it is the mission trip, it is all the ways, including you can, that that we are present and extend that love in real and tangible ways. And so our offering makes that possible. We don't pass the plate here at Epworth, but there are boxes at the entrance of the sanctuary. And so we'd like to take a moment for the offerings and gifts that have been given for those that will be given and for those given online. God,